Hello everyone, I'm Brandon and today we're going to be taking a look at Rob Klein. Rob was part of the Ohio Sting and as we see from his picture here, he's he's usually distinguished by the fact that he has what people call a baby face. He looks so young. He was 20 years old, which is a lot younger than a lot of the predators caught on the show. And I think there are some people out there that kind of, I wouldn't say they give him a break, but they... It almost seems like what he did wasn't as bad just because he looks young and is immature. But obviously that's no excuse. It's not It's not what the law uh, allows. And he is a very sick individual. And someone that looks like this and is that age probably has a greater chance of actually, you know, doing something terrible to the minor than an older man would. Because, you know, he is just a little bit closer in age and could be someone that they might look up to so he's definitely a danger uh so let's jump into this uh chat log here the perverted justice person says another dateline bust this one told me that he'd met and been with a minor so i'm glad he showed up to the bust house yikes so i guess right there we already kind of know what we're in for i have not read this chat log before so let's see what's happening here so rob klein says Hey there, want to chat? And of course, like always, they let the predator be the one to reach out to them first. And she says, okay, what's up? ASL, age, sex, location. And the decoy's name here is Shy Shia Girl. And this is at 8, 10 p.m. So Rob says, not much, 20 male, I'm not even sure what that means, S here, that's weird, U. And then she says, uh, 13 female Ohio. You're not in Ohio? And then he says, yeah, I am from Toledo. Oh, okay. You you from Ohio, I take it? Then she says, yeah, I said that, LOL. So already, I wonder if that could just be an innocent mistake, but I wonder if he was so focused on the fact that she said she was 13 that where she was from, you know, he didn't even read that part of the sentence. He probably read the 13F, and that's all he was thinking about. So he didn't even read that she was in Ohio. Then he says, oh, my bad, sorry. And she says, close to Dayton. Uh, where exactly? Well, city anyway. Close to Dayton. And she says, cool. You go to college? Not yet, but this summer. And then she says, cool. You going to a big college? He says, no, just a small one, but I really like it. So this, this decoy in this part seems to be chatting with them a little bit more. She's asking them kind of questions. I, I could be mistaken. I've only started reading these chat logs. The ones I've seen on the segments, they don't seem to ask so many questions. So this one's showing a bit more interest in Rob. So then Rob says here, you're a really nice girl to talk with. And of course, he uses the wrong your. Pet peeve of mine, but uh, by far not, not the worst thing that Rob has done. And I think I said in my last commentary that so many of the predators say something like that. You're really cool. You're really nice to talk to. Like they've only been talking, what, eight, like, ten? So they've been talking for ten minutes. She hasn't said anything that really could make her interesting or nice to talk to. Like, they've only just started talking. So it's obviously just a ploy to kind of try to rush their connection. If he says that, it makes them seem like, you know, they're better friends and they're they're a little bit closer than they were. He's just trying to rush that so he can get to what he's trying to do. Because the most interesting thing she probably said was uh, when he asked, what, what do you do with your time? And she says, hang out with friends, music, and sports. That's the only thing that she said that could, you know, really give a key to her personality. And those things are so general. Like, everyone hangs out with friends, listens to music, and watches sports. Well, I mean, not everyone, but they're, they're not specific things. They're, you know, it's just very broad. And he says, by the way, nice pick in your profile. And I guess really, I mean, saying that to a 13-year-old is... is uh, not a great thing. Now, obviously, saying that anything like that to a 13-year-old is, is bad. But if that was an adult woman, it's not necessarily um, like you have any bad intent. He's not saying that she looks hot or anything. He's just saying, nice pick. But as we all know where this is leading, you could tell that that's kind of the start of things. And she says, thanks. He says, hey, no problem, just stating the obvious. And he's not... Uh, he doesn't have very good language skills. He says, so have you lived where you do know for long? I'm sure he meant uh, now for long. So have you lived where you do now for long? Still just a really poorly constructed sentence. 
I'm usually not, I'm not a grammar Nazi or anything, but when uh, someone's a sexual predator like this, I'm going to rip them apart for anything, uh, anything they do because it makes all their flaws just that much worse. And she says, my parents are from Japan. And Rob says, that's awesome. I know a woman from Japan. I trained with her in the army. Her name was Yuki. That's strange. I've been to Japan myself when I was younger. And I knew a girl named Miyuki. And then he says, yeah, she was really cool to hang out with. And then he asks if he can put her on her on his list. Just as a new friend is all. So then here he says, this is about 20 minutes into the conversation. He says, so what do you want to talk about now? Which, obviously, we know what he wants to talk about, and it's probably his way of leading into it. Because, generally, when you're talking to someone, like, say, one of your friends, you don't ask them, hey, what do you want to talk about? That's not how conversations work. Conversations flow naturally, usually by one person saying something and then the other person discussing it. That's how it works. You don't sit down and say, what do you want to talk about now? The only time you do that is if you're trying to either start the conversation and lead it down a particular path, or if you're trying to change the subject. So... This conversation could have gone on with the, the bullshit it has been with just, you know, getting to know you kind of talk. But Rob doesn't want that. He wants to get into sex talk right away. So he has to kind of do something to just bring up the idea of a conversation change. And that is, so what do you want to talk about now? And I'm assuming he is going to somehow try to lead the conversation towards sex. And she says, I don't know, whatever is cool with me. Then he says, well, you can get to know me more. Feel free to ask me anything. I have a girlfriend. Anything else you want to know? LOL, just ask. Then she says, I don't have a BF. Usually the predator is the one that asks if the decoy has a boyfriend. He or she's the one that brought it up. But I guess he inadvertently brought it up by saying, I have a girlfriend. So it almost demands some sort of reciprocation. So maybe Rob is just very tricky that way. He didn't want to flat out ask, but he knew that if he says he has a girlfriend, she would obviously you know, say the same thing back. I wonder if he's lying about having a girlfriend. I don't see why it would not be true, but it could also just be a, a ploy to uh, kind of trick her into that. And also it just makes what he's doing a little bit worse. Like the guys that are married, like it's just, it's obviously it's not right for anyone to do. It just makes it all that worse. He's a young guy. He has a girlfriend. He's in college. He has a lot going for him, and then he's doing this kind of shit. Like, that's just, it's bad. Okay, I made this text a little bit bigger here, so I can, uh, can see it easier. Maybe you guys can see it easier, too. Um, so after she says, I don't got a BF, he says, well, sorry to hear that. You mean they're not all over you and your beauty? And she says, I only had one boyfriend before. So I already know where this is going. I bet you... I'd be willing to put money down that he asks if she's a virgin or asks what she has done sexually very quickly here. She says, I only had one boyfriend before. He says, did that last long? Not really. And then he says he's 5'9", brown hair, green eyes, skinny, about 30, 130 pounds. So he's a, he's a very small guy. And then she says she's 5'1 and 90 pounds, so she's even smaller. And then he says, so you just turned 13? Yeah, sweet, a new teenager, lol. Come on, buddy, that is uh, that is very disturbing. And then he says, yeah, I know a 13-year-old girl from Cleveland that only talks about how much she wants me. Oh my god, what a, what a douchey thing to say. Why would you ever brag to another to a girl like this that you're basically trying to pick up, even if she was of age, that there's some other girl that wants you? That's very cringy. Then he says, I'm just like, okay, that's nice. Calm down, LOL. Then she says, LOL, I guess you don't like her. And then he's like, nah, she's cool and all. I don't know. Not like I, not like that I have a GF. Yeah, I don't understand some of his sentences. And then she says, oh, okay. He says, what? Nothing. Yeah, it's kind of confusing at that part. And he says, okay, just making sure. Sounded like I was weirding you out or something. She says, nah. I wonder why he might think that he was weirding her out. Like, obviously he is from what he's saying, but what did she say that would give him that idea? I think James Rutherford does that, where he just almost says kind of like the negative version of everything. Like, oh, I'm so ugly. Just hoping that she'll confirm, no, you're not. So if he says, it sounds like I was weirding you out or something, and she might be like, no, you're not weirding me out. And that kind of clears him to continue. Maybe that's what he's thinking. And then he says, why would you get with a 20-year-old guy? She never said anything about wanting to get with a 20-year-old guy. I think, well, you probably just, uh, you know, if there was a comma after that, why? Why? Or a question mark, I guess. Why? Would you go out with a 20-year-old guy? Yeah, that makes more sense. And then she says, I don't know, maybe. 
And he says, maybe if the time was right and you were both free for a wild ride on each other, LOL. So he's definitely crossing the line now. Um, we, there's no denying where he's taking this conversation. And, of course, then he says, JK, just kidding. Yeah, a lot of them do that. It's uh, I think a lot of people just do that in general over text-based chat is just add the just kidding after everything they say or the LOL to kind of reduce the, the impact of it. So I guess if anyone is confrontational with them or if the person they're talking to reacts badly, they can claim it was just a joke. They didn't mean it. It's like, man, if you're going to say something, anything, just have the balls to just say it. Don't back down after every single statement because you're too afraid to follow through with it. It's just a bad way to communicate. And in a case like this, you shouldn't be saying it to begin with. It's just, yeah, it annoys me. Of course, you know, Lauren Armstrong, just every sentence, LOL, LOL, LOL. Then she says, LOL, oh my God, you're funny. He says, yeah, I try to be. (laughs) Oh, man. Rob seems like a very needy kind of guy. Maybe it's just age. He hasn't had the the time to to mature yet and to kind of know what correct behavior is. But then again, there are other 20-year-olds that do not act like this. So I guess that can be an excuse that he uses. And she says, I don't know, that would be weird. I think I like with just one person. What? And he says, what do you mean? Yeah, what does she mean? Oh, she must have misread when he said, maybe if the time was right and you were both free for a wild ride. He must. She must have thought that he meant, like, him and then if you were both, as in her and another person. Whereas he was talking about her and some potential guy. So he says, what do you mean? With sex or something? And she says, yeah, I thought that's what you mean. He says, no, no, I just meant one-on-one, lol, no crowd of three. LOL. Oh, sorry. I wonder if this conversation is going as well as Rob had intended. This is already, you know, we're not that far into it. They've only been talking half an hour and there's already been a few instances of confusion. Like they're not quite gelling properly. I wonder if that's bothering him at all or if he's just happy that it's, for the most part, uh, leading down the path that he intends. And I bet you that the perverted justice decoy person typing here, they're just like, you fucking moron <laughs> uh it's probably just frustrating having to deal with these guys to begin with let alone the ones that can't write properly and are difficult and confusing to talk to and then he says no it's fine i'm sorry i shouldn't have brought it up but you did bring it up rob that's the thing you can't like you can't do something bad and then say you shouldn't have done it you still did it there's no like apologizing for something does not negate the fact that you did it and it doesn't mean that there's no consequences so you can't say something gross to a person and then say oh i'm sorry i shouldn't have brought it up you know if it's something maybe innocent that's fine like you know people make mistakes but when it's something like this like yeah you shouldn't have brought it up there's no excuse to and then she says it's cool and he says k and again that's one of his like he's saying i shouldn't have brought it up i know damn right well he wanted her to give him the okay and she does by saying it's cool and then he says you sure you're okay with talking sex and stuff with a 20 year old i guess he's just saying that obviously to you know to basically comfort himself that she cannot back down and say that he was doing it against her will but it doesn't matter he's you know she's too young to consent and he shouldn't be doing it anyway and she says yeah i don't care if you don't and he says no i just wanted to make sure you were okay with it so maybe he's one of these nice guy predators, the one that, you know, they only want to do it if she wants to. And, you know, he's not as vulgar, at least to this part of the chat, as some of the others. So he probably thinks that, you know, he's being a nice guy. He has good intentions towards her. So he's not like some pervert that's going to hurt her. Maybe that's how he justifies it in his own mind. But it doesn't matter. All that matters is what you intend to do. And, you know, how you justify it to yourself is not even part of the issue. Oh, yeah, here we go. He says, so, um, you ever, dot, dot, dot. So he doesn't even have the courage to flat out ask her. I don't think I've ever seen anyone else skirt around that issue. Usually they're just like, can I ask you something? Are you a virgin? He says, so, um, you ever, dot, dot, dot. And then do anything with anyone? So he can't even come out and say it. And she says, I never did it all the way, but I messed around. And he says, really? Like kissing and stuff or more? Playing right by the Predator handbook. You could almost teach an AI bot, read all these chats, and they would just, they're all so similar. They could just go through these exact same steps. It always leads down this exact pattern. And then he says, so you've given head or been eaten? 
So yeah, he's uh, definitely getting more specific now, and there's no denying that he's taking, you know, doing sexual talk now. Yeah, both? That's cool. You play with yourself? No. And he says, LOL, just kidding, just kidding. And she says, yeah, right. And he says, what? LOL. Yeah, she, <laughs> yeah she's probably like, yeah, right, you're just kidding. And then he says, sorry, asking too much. And she says, no, it's cool. Why, like, why does he keep apologizing for doing it if he's just going to keep on doing it? He keeps apologizing, you know, saying he's creeping her out and, you know, asking if it's okay to talk to her about this. And then he keeps apologizing for her, but then he just keeps doing it. And then he says, not a virgin, but not a sex freak who needs it all the time either. Good God. Then Rob says, actually, that 13-year-old I told you about had m me meet her. Oh boy. Yeah, and the... The little blue commentaries here from the perverted justice says, uh. I'm going to read that again because it's pretty gross. Actually, that 13-year-old I told you about had me meet her. And strange that he says had her meet him, as in she was the one controlling it. And there's almost a hint of force there. Had her meet him. Not wanted to meet him, but had, her, had him meet her. That's probably not how it happened. I'm sure he's the one that instigated it and talked her into it. Then he says, yeah, we just hung out, but yeah, she's definitely obsessed. And then the commentary says, continually makes her out to be the freak, sickening. Yeah, I highly doubt that this 13-year-old girl is obsessed with him. I bet you he's the one that you know, initiates the conversation with her every single time, and then she just kind of chats with him, and he assumes that she's obsessed with him. Or maybe he doesn't even think that she's obsessed with him. He's just trying to brag here, so he says that she is. I wouldn't doubt. It's probably true that he's talking to some 13-year-old he met, but I doubt anyone's obsessed with Rob Klein. And she says, that's kind of scary. And he says, yeah, it is for me. She's always like, I love you and stuff. I just ignore it. So is this like his strategy is just to show how much some other 13-year-old girl is into him to make this 13-year-old girl jealous? It's very pathetic on Rob's part. And then, the, of course, the decoy is correct here. She says... Yeah, I don't think I would talk to her. And he says, yeah, I try not to, and I can delete her off here, but she still talks to me because she has me on hers. Wait, I should block her, LOL. Like, like, as if he hadn't thought of that before. Shut up, Rob. Yeah, she told me she wanted me to make out with her and eat her out and eat out her butt. Yeah, I doubt that she said that. He probably said he wanted to do that to her, and he probably kept bringing it up until she finally said maybe or something like that. And then he construes that to be that uh, she wanted him to do that. Fuck you, Rob. And she says, did you do it? He says, um, no. Why, you thought I did? And she says, I don't know. I was just asking. Sorry. And then he says, well, what if I did, LOL? Then just kidding, just kidding. Not only is he doing, you know, saying just kidding. The last two times, he's done it like twice in a row. JK. Next line. JK. And then she says... I don't know, I was just wondering, lol, so did you, for real? And he says, no, I didn't, not the butt part anyway. Yeah, so is he implying that he did the rest of it? And then, yeah, the blue writing says, right, but everything else, disgusting pig. So it's hard to know whether to believe him, because he says he did, then he says he did, or he says he didn't, then he says he did, um, then he says he did part of it. It's like, is he making up the whole thing, or only parts of it? It's kind of like when a person starts lying about little things, and you pick out little lies here and there. All of a sudden, everything they say is is questionable. You just can't trust anything they say because if you make up half the story, it's hard to trust any of the story. So, yeah, let's continue reading here and see if we can kind of make a decision whether or not this is true. Then she says, so you did other stuff? He says, yeah, I did. Is that okay? I sicken you? Yeah, yeah, Rob, you do. Not Maybe not the 13-year-old fictional girl here, but the perverted justice person that's working behind the keyboard. And she says, um, what's wrong with that? No, I don't think you're weird. And he says, nothing is, nothing is just wondering how you felt. Now this takes a bizarre turn. He says, all right, I'm going to Texas. Want to come? LOL. Not a 13-year-old girl, but if you're asking anyone if they want to go somewhere, just ask them if they want to go. Don't put LOL after it to hedge your statement and hope, you know, you can get out if they react negatively. So douchey. He says, not now, but in like two weeks to meet some of my old friends from the army who were still there. Like, why would he think that she would possibly do that? How would she do that? Obviously, she either lives with one or both parents or some sort of guardian. It's going to be hard to take her quarter of the way across the country from Ohio to Texas without people noticing. Not to mention, what are his army buddies? 
you know, who might be his age, early 20s, and all of a sudden he shows up with this girl who's 13. Like, how are they going to take that? I wonder if he, he probably has no real intention of taking her. He probably wouldn't want to take her. But he wants to show that he has an exciting life and that he's, you know, going on some sort of trip to meet friends. So he's, uh, you know, he travels around and he has a group of friends. It makes him sound like a more interesting guy, maybe. She says, I've never been there. And he says, really, it's nice if you're not outside in a military uniform all day sweating your balls off. So is this just more bragging about being in a military uniform? Then he asks her for more pics. And he says, yeah, by the way, I'm playing with a cell phone in my pick, not a Game Boy, as most people think. Of course, he calls it a Game Buy, but I'm sure he means Game Boy. Why why would he feel the need to uh, clarify that? Who cares if he's playing with a phone or a Game Boy? What (laughs) what difference does it make? And she says, looks like a game. He says, yeah, I know, so I thought I would tell you. Then she says, hey, I got to go chat with you tomorrow. He says, what, already? Mom says, I have to help fold clothes. He says, ah, okay, I know how that goes. Talk to you later, sweetie. Okay, bye. See ya. And he's already starting in with the sweeties. So the next day, Rob reaches out at 9.27 p.m. I bet you he was waiting the whole day hoping she would log on. Uh, She doesn't. And he says, hey there, hope you had a good day and another tomorrow. Talk to you later. So obviously he's interested in continuing this conversation because he's reaching out to her. I think Rob just might be a very needy kind of person like a lot of these guys are. It's not as obvious as some of the others, but there's still hints of that in there just with his constant bragging about stupid things. Um, Yeah, but let's continue. So the next day again, he reaches out to her at 9.27 p.m. or 9.28 p.m. He waited a whole 24 hours. I bet you just killed him all day that that she hadn't responded to him like in 24 or 48 hours. I bet you he was concerned he'd uh, lost her. Finally, she logs on. He says, hey there. Hey, what's up? Not a much. LOL. She says, I'm bored too. Yeah, me too. I'm doing nothing fun for the weekend. Yeah, I wish, but I'm not. No. Yeah. And then Rob says, yeah, I'm boring. And I brought this up in my last commentary on um, Timothy Isaac. And there was a lot of talk in that one. Like there isn't a lot of these chats about just I'm bored. I'm bored. This is so boring. You know, I'm not a psychiatrist or anything, but I just wonder if these people had more going on in their lives, would they be less likely to do this? I mean, I'm sure there are some of the predators that have an active social life and other stuff, but if they got nothing to do and they're sitting around bored all the time and they start doing shit like this, in my personal life, I don't find myself really ever getting bored because I know people and I do stuff <laughs> to, you know, to, uh, to entertain myself. And, you know, so I can always find something to do. If I'm bored, I'll go play the bass or I'll go, you know, watch something or I'll go hang out with people. I mean, there's a million things you could do. Even if you're by yourself, there's still things you could do to occupy your time. If you're just sitting around being bored all the time, it doesn't seem like a good way to make a connection with someone is two people sitting there talking about how boring they are. Because people that are bored all the time are usually very boring. Like, I don't know why you'd want to hang out with someone that was constantly bored. Because if they can't entertain themselves, like, they're going to be relying on you to provide their entertainment. Like, most of these predators, like, they would not be cool people to hang around with. Because they'd uh, just be so lame to have to sit around and have a conversation with them. Then she says, maybe I'm going to have a sleepover. He says, oh, really sorry, I can't come, lol. Then she says, you like sleepovers? And he says, yeah, I actually used to go with, I used to go to them with my friends. Yeah, sleepovers are pretty fun when you were a kid. Yeah, I used to always look forward to them. And yeah, it's uh, not something you can do really as an adult anymore, but uh, or at least not in the same context. But yeah, they were fun back in the day. Then she says, so you're not going to see your girlfriend this weekend? So she is asking him some things because there are some chats where the decoy just says nothing, nothing to show interest in them. She just responds to whatever the, the predator says. Um, so Rob's reply is, nope, not unless she finally calls me. I haven't seen her in a week because she told me she needs some space. So I'm giving her some space. She didn't want to see me or anything, not even call, text her. And in this particular case, as in a lot of cases when women say that, it's they're trying to break up with you and they just don't want to have it go harshly. So they say that just so you'll back away and they can eventually leave. They've only been going out a month and she had to deal with this loser. It probably didn't take her long to realize that she doesn't want him around, so... She says, she needs some space. Please don't call or text me. So we might find out later in this chat uh, how that goes, but uh, hopefully she just dumped his ass. And he sa- she says, oh, that sucks. He says, yeah, but I don't worry about it. When she's ready to talk, we will. Until then, I'm bored and alone with nothing to do. Wow, what a, what a catch. Someone that uh, 
you know, if they don't have a girlfriend, they're bored and alone with nothing to do. I mean, what woman would not jump all over the chance to, to date this guy? So she brings up horoscopes. And he says, what's yours say? She says, you're more assertive than usual and super focused on getting your way. Your success is absolutely guaranteed. As long as you're careful not to step on anyone's toes or profit at their expense. I don't think that's very accurate because she's definitely going to be stepping on Rob Klein's toes and profiting at his expense. But then again, we all are. And she says, I can look yours up if you give me your birthday. He says, sure, September 22nd. I wonder if that's just the decoy just trying to make bullshit conversation or if they had some sort of legal reason of wanting to get his birth date. Because if they knew that he was 20 years old and they knew his birth date was September 20th, it wouldn't be very hard to figure out his you know exact date of birth. So let's see what his horoscope is. A certain someone may be occupying your heart and mind, but make sure you're not placing this person on a pedestal. Could anyone really live up to those high expectations? Keep in mind during your face-to-face -face encounters. That seems unusually accurate, but I wouldn't be surprised if Rob was the kind of uh, guy that would put women on a pedestal. It seems like he would be. Then he says, kind of weird thinking of the situation me and my girlfriend are in. Yeah, exactly. Then he says, so does yours fit you so well too? And she says, no, not really. I wonder if uh, Rob Klein was just shaken to the core. You know, he's trying to pick up on some 13-year-old. She reads his horoscope and it just shines this bright light on his uh, depressing soul. Again, she says, LOL, you're funny. He says, I try to be humorous. And I mean, as much of a douchebag as this guy is, I gotta say that he is more interesting than a lot of the Predators. A lot of them anger me a hell of a lot more than this. They're either more vile, just have way worse communication skills, or they're just somehow generally more annoying. Whereas Rob, like all things considered, is like one of the better ones so far if you completely ignore the illegality and uh, the terribleness of what he's trying to do. Uh, it's not as bad as it could be. But let's see uh, how it is when it continues. Oh, and then he says, so when's the sleepover? She says, tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow being the date that uh, Chris Hansen and the Dateline team are coming over. He says, cool. All right, I'll bring some chips and pop. That's another thing I miss about the old sleepover days when you'd like, yeah, pop and chips and then watch some movie that you probably shouldn't be watching, but it was always fun. You know, back then, just simple things like that. It meant so much more than it does now. And then Rob says, yeah, but I don't think it would be so cool with your parents to have a 20-year-old guy spend the night at their house. You think? And then she says, yeah, but if I ever see you, I'm not going to be telling them. And he says, why not, lol? Because the probs not like it. Yeah, I guess they wouldn't. I wonder if he was hoping that she would be like, yeah, they'd be cool with it, don't worry about them. And then he wouldn't have to worry about trying to sneak around behind her parents' back. And he says, but if I saw you, we could just hang out, you know, not do other things, you dirty mind. <laughs> Fuck you, Rob. You're the one with the dirty mind. He's the one that totally brought this up, and then he's trying to spin it around like she's doing it. I mean, this might be good playful banter if it was someone of his similar age, but the fact of this age different and that it's a 13-year-old is very manipulative. Then she says, my comp is messing up, so I gotta go. Okay, that sucks, but okay, see you later. So she basically just cut the conversation off. I think once he's almost caught, right, it, he's, she's slowly luring him in. They're kind of tentatively making the, the possibility of plans. So there's no point in her just chatting endlessly with this guy. So she makes up some stupid excuse that her computer is messing up and then she's got to go. And here we are the next day. So when did this start? This started on the 14th. Oh, so actually that... There's a, a day between here, between the 15th and the 17th. So it was actually like three days instead of two um, before they had their, their next chunk of talk. And then we jump ahead another few days. So I guess I was wrong. That was not the date. When she said tomorrow, that was not the date Chris Hansen was going to be there. But uh, And they always seem, every conversation starts kind of like 8 or 9 p.m. I wonder if that's just the time he's generally on his computer or maybe he you know, has college during the day and then goes to, to the old part-time job or and that's just the time he gets home every night. She says, you do anything fun today? She says, nope. He says, nope. Did some research and talked to some old friends. I wonder what he did research on. How to pick up 13-year-olds maybe. And he says, well, I'm not with my girlfriend anymore. Wow, I can't believe I predicted that with such accuracy. can't believe that some woman would not want to date rob klein he says we're still good friends and all 
Somehow I doubt that. I don't want to bore you with my relationship details. And she says, yeah, <laughs> good. She says, I had my sleep over Saturday. Oh yeah, how did that go without me there? Then Rob says, ah, and here is the return of the Rob's other 13-year-old. He says, yeah, that 13-year-old I told you about was just talking to me a while ago. Oh, yeah, she's still crazy. Then the decoy says, you can put her on Iggy. I'm not sure what that means. Yeah, if this is such a problem for him where he's that disturbed or annoyed by her, it's not hard to either block someone or not talk to them. I'm sure he just loves having this 13-year-old that's obsessed with him. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's the one that reached out to her as well. I can guarantee it. Rob says, I should and then just talk to you. LOL. Yeah, you should. Then Rob says, yeah, and then you would have to come meet me. You somewhere and well, who knows. It's a horrible sentence, but we get what he's trying to say. Then he says, I guess that's not really a problem, though. She says, not really. I'm sneaky. LOL. Even better than so sneaky that your parents would never even know, right? Like, isn't it's bad to begin with with a girl this age, but just trying to sneak around and do stuff behind her parents' back, doesn't that just make it grosser for him? Does, he just has no moral compass where that seems like a problem to him. And then she says, so when you want to hang out? Hey, you tell me. Uh, maybe the weekend? Rob Klein says, I don't even know where you're from. Near Dayton. I remember that. I know you're from Ohio. That's all I remember. Greensville. Where is that close to? Dayton, kind of. She says, you got a cool car? Are you asking me or telling me? <laughs> That's actually kind of a funny line. You see what happens when you use poor grammar, Rob? You can't understand uh, the meaning behind a sentence. He says, well, yeah, I got a cool car. 2000 Mustang, dark green with tinted windows. Awesome. Yeah, I can't see you this weekend, though. Aw, or the next. LOL. Well, that's cool, but the weekend after I could. What about Friday? This Friday I could do. Okay, that's cool. So where do you want me to meet you, and when? My house. Obviously her house. We, we wouldn't have as much fun with this stuff if it was anywhere else. Gotta check when my parents work. And yeah, that's so risky. Like, just the fact that these, these kids have parents. Like, the predators, some of them are worried. But I remember even as a kid, you know, going over to someone's house, you know, if you're doing something you shouldn't be doing, you're always trying to sneak around their parents, you know, getting caught by your own parents or your friend's parents. Like, just trying to get away from your parents was always an issue when you were a kid. This is a thousand times, the consequences for this are a thousand times worse. So, like, wouldn't they be worried that not only the parents could be there, but what if the aunt or uncle just happens to swing by or the grandparents, they're... There's so many things that could happen when a kid this age is home alone. Like, they should just be worried on so many levels that this could go wrong. But I guess their desire to do this just kind of cancels it all out. Even says, really? Your house? Yeah. Okay, won't your parents care or will they be there? They won't be there. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. You sure you're sure? See, at least Rob, I don't know if maybe it's just he's slightly smarter than the rest. Possibly, you know, just his military training where he might just be more paranoid, uh, a little bit more cautious going into a situation. So she says, uh, LOL, okay, I like to hug. He says, me too, and other things, LOL, but we can just hang out if you want. So I wonder if he's one of these guys that's willing to, uh, once he gets there, to move a little bit slower. Once he knows that he basically has his hooks in and he's able to get a meeting with her, maybe he doesn't want to you know, basically have sex on the first time there. He maybe is honest in that he would do that the second or third time, which is just as bad. Doesn't justify him that they didn't want to do it the first time. But Rob looks like he's kind of wants to make this a regular thing where if he can just go over there, maybe the first time he can scope out the situation, see how it goes. And also he could have a more sinister reasoning for it too. If he can just go there the first time, not even touch her, leave, he can wait to see if there's any repercussions. Her parents might find out something might happen and if he can honestly say that he never touched her never did anything then he gets away with it if he's in the clear and no one finds out he can go back again you know the following weekend or whatever and do whatever he wants to do so maybe he's just being extra cautious and he kind of wants to go and scope out the situation before he follows through with it i guess we won't know what his plan was he says i like to kiss hug cuddle she says me too i like that stuff lots i think i'm a good kisser and then Rob says, I like to do foreplay, kissing all over and stuff. I like licking and eating out, getting head, and well, sex, but we don't have to do all that if you don't want to. 
She says, we can do that. I heard it hurts a little bit, though. He says, yeah, it does, but it feels good, too. And then he says, so I meet you at your house. You're going to tell me what time, but where exactly is your house? She says, yeah, I'll tell you. I tell you my Addy when I know for sure the time. She probably has to work it out with the Perverted Justice and Dateline team to figure out when they can fit him into his time slot between all the other Predators. I bet you these guys feel like such fools after they're, they're caught and they realize it's part of a sting and it's going to be televised. You know, he probably thought he was just so original and finally you know, found this girl and probably was just all felt good about himself. He was going to go down there and then just figures out he was totally manipulated into it. Not, mani- not manipulated into doing it, but the whole thing was basically just finding a time slot to fit him in because he was one of many guys who shows up and they were just waiting to humiliate him. I just wasn't sure you wanted to, you are a virgin and all. You sure you want it to be me that takes that? And she says, yeah, why not? You're cool. No, he's not. He says, I just dot, dot, dot. You really sure? I feel weird about you being so much younger than me and all. If you feel weird about it, don't do it. You're not old. Don't feel weird. So you want this old guy doing you in your house on your bed or whatever? So I guess he just wants her to take away any sort of maybe lingering hesitation he has just asking are you sure you want it you sure you want it doesn't matter how many times she says it it's uh it's still wrong then she says you're not old he says okay you want this young man doing you in your house wherever you tell me and she says yeah so how much time do you think we would be alone she says i don't know like for hours for hours or four hours four hours (laughs) And he says, so why are you up so late? It's only 9.43. Is that really that late? I think I stayed up that late when uh, I was that age. Ah, just want to talk with me, huh? So she's he's getting into, like, uh, similarities with good old Lorne. You know, the whole, you must really like talking to me. Like, how does he know she's not talking to ten other guys at the same time? And he says, too bad we don't have cams, huh? She says, yeah, that sucks. And he says, LOL, sucks. I'll be doing some of that Friday night on you. Oh, God. Unless you don't want me licking all over your body and your nipples and your crotch. She says, um, it's cool with me, lol. It's kind of weird. Like, this is a very, very sexual inappropriate chat. But it's actually a little bit less graphic than some of the other ones. It's like he's holding back a little bit or something. I wonder if that's just his age. Or he doesn't want to come across as 10 out of 10 on the vile scale. So he's just going for like 7 out of 10. So in four days... He says, well, I'm kind of excited. Okay, more than excited. It's almost funny that they give him four days to prepare, just four days for them to get all hyped up and then just completely crush their hopes and dreams. He says, uh, I'll dream about you naked to soothe me. <laughs> and then the decoy says uh, in the blue commentary, and I'll dream about you in handcuffs to soothe me. <laughs> yep. Then the next day he says, hey, stranger. Well, cutie, talk to you later on tonight, I hope. I can't wait till we hang out. Then the next day she says, I can't wait to hang out too. And then uh, he's like, then Rob says, hey, will you still be on in like an hour and a half or two hours? And she says, I guess so, why? And Rob says, well, I'm going to go work out a drive around with my brother for a bit. Ah, the infamous Rob Klein brother. He makes his first appearance in the chat log. Then he says, so you find out anything about Friday? She says, yep, my mom will be working all night. So whenever you want to come over is cool. All night? What about your dad? He's gone till Sunday. Oh, business trip or something? Yeah, for work. It's kind of easy that these decoys can make up any story they like of why their parents are gone. Most of them, I think, are, have single mothers. This one has both parents. But it's easy just to say, oh, my parents are going on a trip. Uh, my mom's going to visit her sister. They can make up any story they like for why they're home alone. Rob says, cool, when does your mom go to work? Or what time do you get home? She says, like two. I can skip if you want. And Rob says, well, how could you? Would your mom care? She says, I could say I'm sick. So I could leave here at like one and get there after your mom leaves. So I guess he wants to just leave early so he could be there the second the mom is out the door. He wants to maximize his time with her. So where do you live? I'll tell you my Addy tomorrow, but I live off the 36, okay? Then Rob says, so what city do you live in? Jesus, how can they never remember Greensville? I'm not even part of the conversation, I remember. 
That's right, you told me that already. I know, pay attention. So when does your mom come home? Today? She home right now. No, Friday. You said that she works all night. When when she when will she be home then? Oh, it's 7 a.m. Oh, well, I guess we have some time to hang out, huh? All right, so there's a bit of discussion here over trying to get her zip code so he can try to find her address. He's having difficulty finding it on MapQuest. Then Rob says, um, if I left here at 1, it's a 2-hour and 40-minute drive, so I would be there around 3. She says, I've never been to Indiana. So, okay, 3? Yeah, around then. So, you sure you really want me to come? He just keeps asking. I wonder what his motivation for asking that is, just to make sure she's absolutely cool with it. Maybe he doesn't want to show up, and then she kind of has cold feet and doesn't want to, you know, invite him in. Or he just needs that constant reassurance. He says, I don't want to sound dumb, but I just want to make sure you're sure, and I won't ask anymore after this. Yeah, you fucking better not, because you've asked 20 times already, Rob. Then he says, so what can we do all that time? Got any good movies, anything to do around your town? Or you just want to stay in? She says, yeah, I got movies. I thought we were going to mess around. He says, well, yeah, we can, but that's a long time just to be messing around the whole time. He says, heck, it could be almost 12 hours. She says, lol, we can watch movies and eat or whatever. He says, so what kind of house do you live in? Like one or two stories at all? Just wondering. Two stories. Yeah, we got a big house. You got a big bed for like two people? What kind of big house would not have a bed big enough for two people, you idiot? Even a small bed could fit two people. She says, yeah, it's big. It's a queen. And she says, hey, can I call you for a little bit tonight? He says, I wish I could say yes, but my mom just went to bed and that wouldn't normally be a problem. But we are in an apartment right now and I don't want to make, I don't want to wake her. Sorry. Oh, so Rob lives with his mom in an apartment. That's interesting. I just assumed he had his own place. Then he gives his phone number here. I wonder if that's still in service. So how was your day? She says, good, but kind of boring. So anything exciting happening in school? Any hot teachers? Yeah, we got this one guy, James Rutherford, so hot. <laughs> and it's just even gross to ask that. Like, it's just not something that, uh, I guess if you're one student to another, you could talk about, you know, which teachers are hot. You know, I sure did with friends when I was in school, but you wouldn't ask an uh, underage person if any of the teachers at their school are hot. That's just completely inappropriate. And she says, there was a fight, but they broke it up real fast. Rob says, ah, let them fight it out. The worst that could happen is someone dies. Yeah, that's exactly why they break up fights, so someone doesn't die, Rob. He says, so why can't you tell me your address tonight? And at least he does have some some bit of, you know, kind of insight into that, where things are out of the ordinary. He does bring up some of the guys, the decoys, could just act as suspicious as they want, and the predator wouldn't really pick up on it. Rob seems not really suspicious, but he just has enough caution that things that seem abnormal he has to bring up, such as, why can't you tell me your address tonight? You know, if he's coming over, why does it matter when she gives her address? So, and it's probably because they don't want him coming over early when the, you know, the perverted justice and the Dateline team are busy or when they've shut down for the night and there's nobody there. They really need to make sure that he comes at the appropriate time. So it's best just not to give him the address until the last moment and see what her excuse is. I just thought tomorrow would be better because I can't talk really long tonight. I'm kind of scared in case my mom sees some guy around. If I tell you tomorrow, I don't got to worry about it. I'm just trying to be safe and not get busted. Yeah, good enough excuse. And it works. He says, well, okay, don't worry, lol. Finally, she says, hey, what's your name? I'm Shia. He says, my name is Rob. Cool. <laughs> then he says, you're 13, I'm 20. Talk about just giving incriminating evidence in one sentence there, Rob. Isn't it just kind of gross that they've basically already talked about all the sex stuff, agreed to meet and engage in that stuff, and then towards the end of the conversation, it's, by the way, what's your name? Usually the name is comes up within the first few seconds of meeting a person. And he says, hey, what seven years, lol. And he's about to find out what, uh, what society thinks about that age difference. And she says, who cares? Um, society and the law? Exactly. So not only in this little exchange here, he's stated their ages, stated the difference in their ages, stated that society and the law cares, and then he says that he could go to jail for it if someone found out. If I remember correctly, we'll find out at the end, but I think he took this to trial. So why would he go to trial having just said all that stuff? Ah, but he says here, but only if we do stuff. That's why I didn't want to and just want to hang out and see where things go. Ah, so... 
Perhaps I was right when I guessed that he was worried about doing something the first time because he wanted to see how it goes first. He wanted to do like a test run before he really did something. But he's wrong. He thinks that they can only get in trouble if they actually do it. But a lot of those guys think that. But then they find out that, no, you can get in trouble just for talking about it and going there because that shows you, you had intent. And he says, what if I come there as just a friend? Stuff could still happen, though, but not come there just for that. Is that cool? I wonder if he's saying this just in case he gets caught. He can say that he was coming there just as a friend. But then the very next line, he says, stuff could still happen, though. But for now, I'm just a friend. Maybe I won't be able to resist you. He can't even make up his mind from, like, one sentence to the next. I'm just coming as a friend. We won't do anything, but maybe we will. He says, well, if I show up and you're already naked waiting for me on your bed, then it might be hard to just be friends. And she says, I can do that. He says, yeah, but then I would just walk in and not know where to go. She says, LOL, up the stairs and to the left. Of course, there's another famous predator that wanted the uh, decoy to be naked right when they walked in. And uh, I don't even have to say who it is because I know that we all know. So would you like to watch a movie with me with your hand down my pants? Why would he ask that? That's so stupid. Or no pants. We could just be naked all day. And he says, so some girls like it up the butt. Do you? Because I never have. Don't know if you have. She says, don't know. I never did that before. Well, it's mainly so you don't have to worry about pregnancy. But I hear it hurts worse. Who knows, though? So when I get there and up the stairs and to the left, right? One naked 13-year-old girl waiting for me. And then later here he says, You know, I've never been in a shower with someone before. She says, Me either. Maybe we could. Yeah, if you wanna. You gonna wash me? And he says, Well, after I lick all over you, wouldn't you want me to? I don't know why so many of these guys, they have to go over every possible detail of what they could do when they get there. You know, they couldn't just, if it was an adult person, you could just kind of go there and then whatever happens, you know, happens as you do it, which seems to be the normal way. You don't have to plan every single step of a sexual encounter before you even go to the person's house. No one really does that. Uh, at least I don't think so. So it just seems weird that they have to just... Maybe it's because she's been so agreeable so far that he kind of wants to see what her limit is. He's just like, hey, can we try this? And she says, sure. Can we try this? Sure. Can we try this? So he just kind of keeps pushing it and you know his fantasy kind of takes over and he just goes into detail about everything he wants to do. I think a lot of these guys, they just get off on talking about it. He says, so you never slept with anyone before? Like, we've already covered this, Rob. It's We've gone over this multiple times. And she says, are you going to have, like, condoms or something? And he says, well, I could do that or just pull out or jerk off before. So you could give me head and jerk me off first, then just wipe off and you're okay. All right, that's a good plan, Rob. But I probably won't have condoms. Can you, like, bring one? And if it feels weird, you can throw it away or something. Probably just, you know, trying to incriminate him by getting him to bring something that just it would help show his intent. Because there's no way he's going to be using that. He's going to be led away in handcuffs. And he says, my buddy just sent me a pic of his GF. She's not the greatest, but I'm happy for him. Yeah, I'm going to send him a pic of my ex. Why would he bring that up? So now we're on to March 23rd, 06. The day before Rob Klein's life changes forever. He starts the day, once again, 8 p.m. What's up? Very excited. He, he doesn't know what's coming. So she says, um, so do I get to call you tonight or is your mom home? Yeah, she's home and about to go to bed. Sorry. It's also just kind of lame to be 20 years old. You know, you're a full-blown adult, but you live with your mom and you can't use the phone because she's in the house. Like, why can't you just talk to her in his room and tell her that he's talking to someone he knows? Like, is she that nosy that she's going to demand to know who it is? Or I guess he's just trying to cover his tracks and doesn't want any chance that uh, she would find out. I think the decoy is wondering the same thing because she says, so your mom would freak out if you got a call? He says, no, she wouldn't really care, but I would have to go out and onto the unheated patio and freeze while I talk to you. He couldn't just take the phone into his own bedroom? Like, I don't know, how, how small is this apartment? So really, I just don't want to freeze, sorry. Boy, I bet you she just feels great, this imaginary girl that he's unwilling to go stand outside for a couple minutes. I live in freaking Canada, and I'd be willing to stand out there in the middle of winter just for a minute or two. You could throw a jacket on. It's not that cold. So, um, you still on for tomorrow? Yes. So, um, where do you live? What's the point of writing, um? I know people say that in their casual conversation because it just 
gives them something to say while they you know think of the next part of the sentence everyone kind of does that but why would you type that why not just say where do you live are you still on for tomorrow so what are your parents names mine are richard and kathy just wondering that's odd that uh he's asking that i don't think any other predators ask that I guess there's nothing wrong with you know getting to know someone asking their parents names but I don't think it's something that you would normally ask until unless you had a reason to or you're going to meet their parents. She says, Ling Li and Chen. And then she says, you there? He says, hang on, talking to other people too. I wonder if he's talking to other underage people. He says, I'm pretty much looking at your house now. I bet you the image of that house would haunt him for years to come. He says, wow, it's a shorter drive than I thought. Really? Yep, only 2 hours and 40 minutes instead of 2 hours and 43 minutes. 149 miles. She says, are you going to be tired when you get here? Maybe. Why? Want me to fall asleep so you can molest me? No, that's what he intends to do to her. She says, I want you to be awake so we can do stuff. By do stuff, she means get grilled by Chris Hansen and then get arrested. He says, so, um, stop putting um in there. So, um, I'll be there around 2.30, Rob says. So I'm just coming as a friend. Yeah, so many of these guys think they can kind of, like, cheat the law by, you know, making these statements like that. I'm just coming over as a friend. Yeah, but after this whole chat log and all the sick shit you said, that's not going to cut it. You can't say all that. And then, by the way, I'm just coming as a friend. Then she says, W-E, is that whatever? You said you were going to mess up, we were going to mess around. I want to. He says... I won't say that I will, but I won't say that I won't either. This guy is so annoying. I'm, he says, I'm just worried we'll get caught. The commentary here says, translation, I'm afraid of getting arrested. I couldn't give a fig about what would happen to you. Yeah, I'm just worried we'll get caught. Yeah, the odds are that if they did get caught, he would be in much more trouble than her. So he's only concerned about himself. He's not concerned about the ramifications for her. Does your mom come home for lunch or anything? No, she eats at the hospital. And I think it's happened before where they said their mom is a nurse because it's a a job that it would make sense that they'd be gone the whole night because most jobs don't have a night shift. If you're a teacher, you're not going to be working until 7 a.m. If you're working at a nurse, it makes complete sense that you'd work the night shift. So it's uh, it's a job that's very believable that a decoy's mother would have. Then he says, Okay, well, until I get there, I'm saying that I'm just your friend. Well, all your questions about my car and me have me worried. She says, I was just asking. Jeez, you didn't even tell me, so it's no biggie. Ah, so Rob is actually a little bit more intelligent than a lot of these guys. These are things that should have anyone worried. It's possible, I suppose, that coming from a teenager, they might just ask a bunch of stupid, nosy questions that they don't really need to know the answer to. But for the most part, if people were asking very specific questions, if you're going to meet someone and they're like, what are you going to be wearing? What kind of a car are you going to be driving? It sounds like some sort of setup, like they're waiting for you to come. So that would, to most normal people, be a red flag where you'd be wondering what's up. Like, why are you asking me so many questions? So he's kind of right here to think something's up. Most of these idiots would never consider this, but Rob does. And then he says, are you calling the cops on me? And then the narrator says, nah, they're already there, Paco. And again, he does the, just kidding. And then again, just kidding. But he is, it's in the back of his mind, the possibility that the cops could be there. Am I just too crazy and worried? Should I calm down? And really, if you're crazy and worried about being busted somehow, why would you ask the person who could potentially bust you if you should calm down? They're not going to, you should ask, you know, a third party who can have a subjective view of it. And she says, yeah, I think so. He says, I don't think I can until I get there and know everything is okay. And I bet you that's part of what drives a lot of these guys. They have this paranoia going there that something will go wrong. But once they're in the house, once they see the girl, once everything's cool, then they know they're in the clear and all of that kind of fades away. They just have to get over that massive hump, which is walking through the door and hoping nothing goes wrong. And of course, their nightmare comes true because it's exactly where things go wrong. So, and that's part of what makes uh, To Catch a Predator such a great show is that it's rare that you get to have that kind of insight and catch someone, catch one of these predators at that point. Usually when you hear about this kind of thing, it's after they've already been caught. So they've already been caught. They've already, you know, gone to jail. Either they're in jail or they've been released on bail. They've already gotten a lawyer, been told not to say anything, not release a statement. So you never get to know the whole situation or know what their justification is or anything like that. Here they get to catch him at the most embarrassing opportunity for them. 
and just confront them, you know, with Chris Hansen coming out and demanding to know what they're doing there. So it's probably why this show, you know, 15 plus years later is still popular amongst the people in our in our uh, TCAP community because it is a really brilliant show and it's as far as I know it's ne- there's been other similar things online but they've never really captured this the magic that the show was at the time. Chris Hansen has his new show called uh, was it Take a Take a Seat I think it's called and the format's a bit different and it's just it's not the same. I might even do I don't think I've seen anyone else do commentaries on those. I might try doing one maybe but it's just the um, they change the order. It opens up with the guy walking into a hotel room or motel room getting busted and they take him into a back room handcuffed where he talks to Chris Hansen. But it's like they got it backwards. That's not as satisfying as when the original ones where it would be they show up, they get grilled by this strange man, then they walk out and get arrested. And that's what makes it great is that, you know, they don't necessarily know they're going to get caught as they walk out. And yeah, so a bit of a tangent, but yeah, that's what made the show so brilliant. So let's continue on with it here. Yeah, so he's saying, I don't, I don't think I can calm down until I get there and know that everything's okay. And Rob even says, you know, all we talk about is sex. See, as far as his horrible, you know, spelling and grammar is, he is great at putting incriminating statements into short form like that. You don't have to read a lot of it. You just have to read five or six things he said here that absolutely incriminate him. And I'm not a lawyer or anything, but I have the feeling that some of those things he says, like, you're 13 and I'm 20, and all we talk about is sex. Those would be very damning if they were read out in court. They're talking about what kind of movies they want to watch. She says she likes funny movies and action movies. I don't like stupid movies. Rob says, uh, that way you can watch it naked as I sleep next to you. So they're talking about some movie. But it's kind of funny that they're, he's planning to sleep there. But the mom said she'd be home at 7 a.m. It's pretty damn early. So there's always a chance when she gets home that early that they're going to sleep in and she's going to get caught. So if, I mean, if she was coming back the next afternoon, that might be safe. You know, you could still get the hell out of there, like eight or nine. He'd have to be out of there five or six, and there's always a chance he's going to sleep in. He's being very risky by planning to sleep over. And he says, so if I get naked with you in your bed when I get there, you would let me sleep in your bed with you naked as you watched Hitch? Like, why, why does he need to plan this? If you're going over to someone's house for sexual encounter, an adult person, like why would you have to plan whether or not you're going to sleep naked or what movie you're going to watch or whether or not you're going to be naked while watching the movie? Like why does this need preparation? This is not the first time they've had this conversation of where her bedroom is. Up the stairs, I see to the left and which door? First one. First one on my left? Yep. Then I get into your room and I get naked and get into bed with you. Like he just has to have every single step. I wonder if that's like a military thing where they... They plan stuff. I don't think so because other guys have done that. But you couldn't just leave some of this up to chance. Like if you're in a house, unless it's like a mega mansion, you could probably just walk into a house, go up the stairs and hey, you here? And they could call out and you would find out which room they're in. Like I don't know why he has to plan out more than once, you know, which which uh, which direction to her room. Is it the first or second door? Yeah, it just seems like he's over planning this, which is kind of funny because that means probably in his entire two hour and 40 minute drive, He's probably running the scenario through his head, everything that they had planned. You know, he's planned down every single detail. He's probably going over and over in his mind how much it's going to be awesome, how much he's going to love every second of this. And then it just, the whole thing is a con and was never going to happen to begin with. So again, Rob brings up, uh, so we could really just sleep together with no sex. So I think in his mind, kind of like I said earlier, he wants to scope out the situation first. He'll spend the night there, not do anything that he thinks will get him put in prison, like anything sexual. But he figures they could sleep together naked and just not touch each other, and that would not be crossing a line in his mind. So he wants to do as much as he can and go as far as he possibly can without actually crossing that boundary that he thinks will get him in jail. He doesn't realize that there doesn't even have to be a girl there. He's already caught at this point. The second he steps you know, up to that house, he's, he's done for. So he just seems like he's uh, trying to cover his ass here. And you know, if he had any knowledge of the law, he would know that it's not helping him. And then, of course, he says, Okay, Shia, you there? Shia, all caps. You're gone. No, LOL. I'm bored. Can you tell? LOL. That's uh, all in the span of six minutes. That's a very needy person. I can't stand people who do that double, triple, quadruple text. You know, you're talking to someone and uh, you, know, you go take a shower and you come back and there's like four messages from them. Like, 
you know, like my life revolves around waiting by my phone for you to send a message. That rarely happens to me because I block anyone that's annoying like that and, and don't speak to them. So I try to surround myself with the, the best crowd of people I can who don't do that. But if someone ever did this to me, guy or girl, like they would be instantly blocked and cut out of my life forever. That's a very needy thing. And just having someone like this in your life, if it's like a girl you're dating or just anyone you know, that's the absolute red flag for disaster. If they're like that on text, they're just going to be like this and they're going to just do damage to your life. So avoid those people at all costs. That's my experience anyway. I guess I can't can't tell anyone else what they should do. Well, and here we're wrapping up the conversation. Uh, they make plans to get together tomorrow. And then um, he says, okay, well, see you tomorrow then, okay? That's me licking you. And the commentator says, that's me gagging. LOL, LOL, see ya, bye. So that's the end of this uh, literary masterpiece by uh, Rob Klein. So let's just go and quickly check. This is the conviction part of the Perverted Justice website where we see what happened to Rob. It says, um, oh, Ohio, you're moving so quickly. Yet another conviction in Ohio. This time it's Rob Klein. Don't be fooled by his appearance. Klein is a sick individual and should know better. Klein has been sentenced to a month in jail, which kind of sucks considering that most Ohio convictions carry six months in prison. But his restrictions are pretty good and carry a hefty penalty. Restitution of $1,477 plus $2,289 costs of bringing in witnesses for trial, psychotherapy, registered sex offender counseling, sex offender therapy, 40 hours of community service, eight-year prison term if he violates any terms of his probation, which include no internet access, no access to porn, no access to anyone under the age of 18 unless accompanied by an adult, community control for two years, and he has to report his address for 10 years and is classified as a sexually oriented offender. So, yeah, only a month in jail, but all those other restrictions, that's, you know, that's still pretty harsh. And then uh, they continue. In other words, don't be stupid and try to go to trial. You won't win. And then it says, notes from the contributor, Vandekamp. Rob Klein was an interesting case for me. If you look at his picture, he has a baby face. He's one of those guys that most would think, this is a nice guy. He looks so harmless. He couldn't possibly be a bad person. They'd be wrong, though. As much as you'd like to think you can pick these guys out of a crowd, you can't. Rob Klein exemplifies this perfectly. This was the first time I had to testify in the court case. Strangely enough, I wasn't nervous. It was a good experience for me, and I can honestly say that watching Klein's lawyer grasp at straws was a highlight of my trip. Where's the verify, you ask? There was none. We don't need one, as you can see. The chat log speaks for itself. Klein chose to roll the dice and see if he could get off the hook. He failed to do so in the face of our stellar evidence. The sentence was too light for my tastes, but I'll take it. The terms and condition of the sentence really are the silver lining. Thanks to the Dark County Sheriff's Office, Mike Burns and D.A. Kelly for the great work. And this was their 101st conviction since June of 2004 and their 61st conviction of 2006. So for my next video, I will be doing a commentary on the Rob Klein confrontation with Chris Hansen. It should be an interesting one. So once again, guys, thanks for watching. And let me know in the comments uh, if there are any predators that you would like me to do in the future. Okay, thanks. See you next time.